Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back with some Kerbal Space Program, and I'm going to continue my informal series on stage recovery with something which I might call a reverse shuttle. Now, a reverse shuttle looks like a, looks like a regular shuttle, uh, basically. It has wings, it has a fuel tank, but uh, yeah, well, let's, uh, let's just see what we're trying to do here. We're trying to land this. Now, it has stubby wings at the back. I am using Ferrum Aerospace, so we get, of course, body lift and other advantages and yeah we can land it I'm obviously landing it on the grass here simply because that was what I was lined up for and uh, putting on the brakes so I was in the process of developing this vehicle and well as you can see I completely don't have enough braking capability and this ultimately proves to be somewhat fatal so of course back to the drawing board to add some air brakes now, with air brakes, we should be much more capable of shedding that excess velocity. The air brakes are bound to the B key, and those are the flaps. Except that you'll see that the flaps, when I push the B key, they both turned in exactly the same direction, and therefore became something that just wanted to make me turn to the right, rather than to the left. I imagine that would be very good in a NASCAR or some other race where there's only turns in one direction, but when you're trying to build a spacecraft that can steer and land safely, not the best piece of technology to have around. Now, if I was really thinking about things, I would go to Real Fuels, get that, and build, uh, attach a drogue chute. But uh, I considered the design good enough and decided to start testing it for real. So, a reverse shuttle is uh, essentially the inverse of the space shuttle. The space shuttle had a big external fuel tank with uh, solid rocket boosters on it and uh, wings on the main spacecraft body. The reverse shuttle is where you have the boosters with wings and they fly back on their own while the rest of the spacecraft continues. So they're kind of built a little like a mini space shuttle orbiters, but uh, you see that they're actually providing a whole bunch of thrust on the side there to help that main stage get off the ground so it can actually continue to do its mission. So I've skipped through most of the launch at four times regular speed, now it's time to separate. So to do this, we have to throttle back, detach those, and then fire... Oh, okay. So much for that. That didn't quite work. We clearly have some separation anxiety. So after making a few subtle modifications to the design, we are ready to go for it again. Throttle down. And detach. Oh, wow, that was uh, even more destructive than I had expected. Like, they literally seem to just fall apart. Launch test number two. We are go for detach. And... Okay, yeah, that's pretty darn destructive there. Uh, but at least the rest of the vehicle escaped and is on its way to orbit. Onwards with engineering test number E. So we've uh, made some more adjustments. We're going to roll out of this. The idea being that we have a clean separation here. We've adjusted the wings just a little and they should pull them away from the spacecraft. Go! No, yeah, the, the wings literally did pull away from the spacecraft. They also pulled away from the shuttles. Okay, test number pi. 200 units of fuel, power down and detach. Excellent, nice. Now throttle up and escape. Okay, so it had turned out that there was some weird clipping issues and I literally needed to rebuild these boosters, but now we are home free. Oh, but the only thing is my nav ball is at 90 degrees to my orientation. Well, that sounds like it makes things fun. It means my pitch and yaw are reversed. So let's, uh, let's just see if we can make lemon with this lemonade because that would be fun. Okay, so we have RCS thrusters to control pitch, which is going to be more important. We only have, have pitch thrusters. We don't have a yaw on this. For yaw control, we're going to rely on the reaction wheels inside the inside the probe body there. You see we have a 2.5 meter probe body. Okay, we also have control surfaces as well. So we're still continuing upwards, but we need to actually start beginning to think about turning here. So the sooner we can turn, the sooner we can make sure we uh, are going in the right direction. Because obviously we're going sideways at about Mach 1. Although we're 30, 000, 30 kilometers up. Okay, oh, oh, no, no, no. 
Okay, I, I am not getting control here. I'm losing control. Um, yeah, okay, so much for the reversed controls. I think, uh, I think the reversed controls are not working well for me. <laughs> Come on, turn yourself over. You see, I've got the RCS thrusters. No, no, where are you? No, no, come back. Never mind, okay. Let's go and try again. Okay, test number Omega. I've gone in and picked up that probe and turned it through 90 degrees so that hopefully it understands uh, the orientation the way that we mere mortals do. Obviously the probe is super smart mind that is capable of understanding anything, but me as a human cannot really interpret its view, its skewed view of reality. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this is uh, during the recent uh, ESA launch of their uh, little space plane uh, re-entry test vehicle, they also talked about this design. And actually, a couple of weeks ago, um, there was a an ESA scientist. He was saying, "Oh, what SpaceX is doing with their uh, with their uh, Falcon landing on the barge? Oh, that we we thought of that years ago." And to that, I'm saying, yes, you did think of it. In fact, people thought of stage recovery going right back to the Mercury program, but they didn't actually build it, and what you presented was a drawing. So I actually built it in Kerbal Space Program. Okay, detach. And let's see if we can get this working. So now we're clear, throttle up to 100%, and now I have control. So we just go right click and take control of the probe body, and now I have a horizon aligned correctly. Now, obviously, for this demo, I'm only going to fly one of them. If I had Flight Manager for reusable stages, I could uh, take control of everything and even the main rocket uh, over time. But I'm just going to fly this one just to show that it does, in fact, work. So I'm immediately uh, shallowing out my trajectory, right, so that I'm a it's actually going to push me downwards. I'm using the wings a little like a spoiler. So by you know, reducing the rate at which I'm ascending, I will hopefully return at a sh in a shallower trajectory. Because if this thing comes down too quickly, it could, it is entirely possible at this altitude, if I let it just go straight down, that the wings could tear off it. And obviously, the body lift is probably not something we want to fly with alone. We would like to have our control surfaces. Oh yeah, there's the other one. It looks shadow as it passes over. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna tr we're gonna turn around now, just uh, pulling up very slowly here. We want to be careful about stability. Obviously, these things uh, they do certainly have limits. If you exceed them, uh, it, you will put yourself into a spin. And you just have to be very gentle and make sure you don't exceed about 30 degrees uh, deviation from the pitch or thereabouts. Uh, so I'm actually deviating by about 25 degrees, I think. So I'm pretty close. Just keep things down. But I can now feel... Well, I'm not so much I can feel. I can see in the instruments the, f the force of the atmosphere kicking in. So I'm torn between pitching up as much as possible to arrest my vertical speed and not wanting to pitch too far up because that would cause me to spin out of control. Really picking up a lot of speed due to gravity. Okay, but I think now we're going, we can actually push very hard against this. So I'm pitching up as hard as it can and making sure that I'm actually taking that vertical speed and turning it into horizontal speed. I guess I haven't really con you know, managed to complete much of a turn here, but I I'm actually kind of worried that I won't have enough kinetic energy to bring me back to back to the airstrip here. Of course, you know, the with this model, maybe I could go for the island airstrip. That might be a good plan. But let's, uh, let's see if we can get around here. Oh, look at that. It's pulling like three or four Gs in this turn. That's pretty good, considering it's moving at like Mach 2 or Mach 1.5. It's exceeding Mach 1 and it's pulling two or three Gs on those stubby little wings. It's actually pretty good. Okay, so there we go. Now we're, we're completing a proper turn and we're maintaining altitude at about 10 kilometers. We're almost there. We're just going to bring it around to 270. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, dear. Okay. That is not good. That is going to send me into the ocean. Let's try and use the thrusters. 
I'm ju just going to fire the thrusters. Yes, excellent. Ooh, okay. Now I have control again, but I have lost... I've lost a lot of altitude. And what do they say? What was the, the motto ever for aircraft? You know, speed is life and altitude is life insurance or something. <laughs> I've lost a lot of life insurance here. But I think it might actually still be doable. So I'm going to continue it because... Well, why not? What have I got to lose? I mean, it is it is obviously an unmanned spacecraft, so I don't really care too much if I crash it. I'll just have to go and fly it again. So yeah, you see how this is a reverse shuttle, right? The booster, the launch, the heavy boosters are flying back on wings to airstrip, whereas the rest of the rocket continues into space with the actual payload. It's, uh, it's obviously not the other kind of reverse shuttle with the engines pointing straight down towards the ground. That will not go to space today. Although that might actually be a fun challenge, build a, a winged spacecraft which flies up forwards and then lands in reverse. That might be a fun one. Yeah, there's the airstrip. I could totally go for the island airstrip. Eeny, meeny, miny... Yeah, you know what, this one's better because it means that I'm going to be going in the right, right direction. I think I have a tiny amount of fuel if I need any more speed. But I'm obviously going to try and glide all the way in towards the target. And I'm just... I'm going for the airstrip, although I suspect with the braking capability of this that I may not be able to actually uh, land on the airstrip entirely. I might overshoot. Also, one of the problems with this design is you can see that the decoupler is just kind of hanging off the bottom there. Ideally, you wouldn't have that. But uh, I, I th I'm pretty sure it's just a cosmetic effect. Maybe it's, provide it's producing some sort of drag. Ferrum Aerospace will probably model all of this. Yeah, this actually flies pretty well, mostly because a lot of the mass in that main tank uh, was originally from fuel, right? So it's actually very low density. We have a pretty good streamlining on the whole thing. I mean, it is just a a rocket, essentially. Uh, I, I think, actually, it's going to glide surprisingly well. And to be honest, I should have probably put even smaller wings on it. I put on little stubby wings at the front because I wanted to make sure it had enough torque to lift its nose and, and flare at the last minute. But actually, yeah, we're doing quite well here. And I think that we might actually have enough energy to get all the way to the runway. We're about 2,000 meters up and uh, over 200 meters per second. I have no idea how far I have to go, though. So anyway, the whole design came up during coverage of the IXV launch, right? The Intermediate Experimental Vehicle, which uh, incidentally was launched on top of a Vega rocket. You might not have heard of the Vega rocket, but it's a an Ariane space uh, air, you know, Italian space agency rocket. It's got like a, it's all all solid rocket boosters basically until you get to the final stage, and then it has a liquid fuel engines for fine, you know, control getting you know, into the target orbit. But yeah, the IXV was. It's just like a very simple lifting body re-entry vehicle. And it didn't, it obviously didn't land on a runway. It was mostly to test like the aerodynamics of the vehicle as it descended through the atmosphere. Then it, uh, you know, then it deployed a parachute and landed on that. But I don't have a parachute. I'm going to aim for this runway. And it looks like I am well lined up for it. I'm moving at you're just over 170 meters per second. That's uh, about half, you know, Mach. 0.5 now, 500 meters up, descending at about 10 meters, just over 10 meters per second. So I've just got to try and keep this, I want to get it just on the tip of the runway because we're going to be going super, super fast. Actually, now I think about it, that, uh, that spin has put me at almost the proper velocity for landing. And normal, I guess if I'd you know just followed through without that spin, I would have had to have done a loop around the around the flight, you know, the the landing strip until I was uh, able to lose enough velocity to land. But this is going to be pretty good. I just wish I had that drogue shoot. Okay, and we're coming up. Crossing over to land. Now we don't have water to cushion our landing. Flare! Flare! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! No, 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 not up! Not up. Down! Down! Not up! Down! Down! Okay, now it's brake! Brake! Look at that. Look at the flaps coming out as air brakes there. I... Um, okay. 
I think well, I have, I'm slowing down, but I think we might run off the end here. Yeah, we need a bigger runway. We're going to need a bigger runway. Okay, so yes, that is a reverse shuttle. You uh, launch, you have your boosters fly back to base on wings. Yes, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.